part of Kentucky, a man is building an ark. He doesn't think he's the new Noah, but he does think the Bible story may in fact be factual, and he wants to open a theme park to make the case. After several decades of futile search, Noah's Ark is said to be found in Turkey. For years, archaeologists and experts have searched for the remains of this fascinating wooden structure, but all to no avail. Recently, Christians have been quite excited about the discovery of the Ark because of its invaluable significance in the Bible and history. However, something intriguing about the discovery of the Ark is that it's not just enough that it was found. Still, Something shocking has been discovered in the Ark that has sent cold shivers down people's spines. But what could this be? And what does it mean for the world? Let's find out Body Noah's Ark, the fascinating wooden structure that saved his family and pairs of animals from the flood that was meant to destroy the evil on Earth, was said to have been found in Turkey. A mountain in Turkey shows evidence of human activity in the area around the time the biblical flood is said to have taken place. Archaeologists in Turkey have made a discovery, unearthing what they believe could be the remains of a vessel resembling Noah's Ark. Get on the Ark! Everyone on the Ark now! This find was the result of extensive excavation conducted by the Mount Ararat and Noah's Ark research team, a collaboration involving three Turkish and American universities. The team extracted aged rock and soil samples from a geological formation in Turkey, which they believe contained the ruins of the vessel. Their findings also determined that clay materials, marine materials, and seafood were present in the area between 5,500 and 3,000 BC, according to the Turkish newspaper Hurriyet. The Darupinar Formation lies in the Dogubayazit district of Agri, located less than two miles from the Iran-Turkey border. It is a 538-foot geographic feature made of limonite, believed by some locals to be the remnants of Noah's Ark. According to legend, Noah loaded two of every animal onto a 150-meter-long ark to save them from apocalyptic flooding that drowned the earth. In the book of Genesis, it was the mountains of Ararat, in what is now eastern Turkey, where Noah's Ark came to rest after the flood. The mountain stands at 16,500 feet, and is carved out like an ark. AICU Vice Rector Professor Farouk Kaya said, according to the first findings obtained from the studies, human activities in the region have existed since the Chalcolithic period between 5,500 and 3,000 BC. It is known that the flood of Prophet Noah went back 5,000 years ago. Regarding dating, it is stated that there was also life in this region. But before we delve fully into the nitty-gritty of this intriguing discovery, Let's explore this ancient wooden structure and its importance in Bible days. So what is this Noah's Ark, and what is its significance? Noah appears in Genesis 5.29 as the son of Lamech and Ninth, in descent from Adam. The story of Noah's Ark is one of the most well-known stories in the Bible. It is found in the book of Genesis and tells how God instructed Noah to build an ark and save two of each animal from the great flood. The ark would be a refuge for the animals and Noah and his family, while God cleansed the earth. The Bible tells us in Genesis 6 how a confident man called Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. So in ancient times, a righteous man named Noah lived in a world filled with chaos and corruption. God looked upon the earth and saw wickedness spread among the people. However, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Almighty. Consequently, God, in his wisdom, decided to cleanse the earth of its wrongdoing. He chose Noah to carry out a monumental task, to build an ark that would serve as a refuge for Noah, his family, and pairs of every animal. The dimensions of the ark were extraordinary, 300 cubits in length, 50 cubits in width, and 30 cubits in height. God provided precise instructions for its construction, but Noah, with unwavering faith, followed God's command constructing a massive vessel that would become the Ark. Experts say the Ark had three floors and several large rooms with wooden pillars in those rooms. As Noah worked diligently on the Ark, 
he faced criticism and mockery from those who couldn't understand his actions. But Noah pressed on, knowing that he was fulfilling a divine purpose. So the animals, as though they were guided by a higher force, started arriving in pairs, lions and lambs, elephants and rabbits, each finding its place on the ark. Noah welcomed the diverse creatures with the help of his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, showcasing the beauty of God's creation. Then, the appointed time came. The heavens opened, and rain poured upon the earth for forty days and nights. The floodwaters surged, covering the highest mountains. Inside the ark, Noah and his family, along with the animals, were safe from the flood, as seen in Genesis 7:12. So as the waters rose, lifting the ark above the submerged world, a symbol of hope emerged. Noah, a faithful servant, navigated the ark through the storm because he trusted in the divine plan. After 40 days, the rain ceased, and Noah sent a dove to check the weather outside. The dove returned with an olive leaf, signifying that life was returning to the earth. However, Noah waited patiently for the waters to recede. When the time was right, he opened the ark's door, and the human and animal inhabitants stepped onto the dry land. Then God made a rainbow appear in the sky as a covenant from God, promising never again to flood the earth. Noah and his family, filled with gratitude, embarked on a new beginning. The earth was reborn, and they understood the importance of God's guidance and their unwavering faith. The religious meaning of the flood is conveyed after Noah's heroic survival. He then built an altar on which he offered burnt sacrifices to God, who then bound himself to a pact never again to curse the earth on man's account. God also renewed his commands given at creation but with two changes. Man could now kill animals and eat meat, and the murder of a man would be punished by men. The story of Noah's Ark became a timeless testament to God's mercy, the power of faith, and the promise of renewal. Significantly, the Ark of Noah is said to hold profound significance across various dimensions, not just spiritual but historical and moral aspects. Interestingly, the construction of the Ark and the subsequent flood represents a divine covenant between God and humanity. After the floodwaters receded, God established a covenant with Noah, symbolized by the rainbow, promising never again to destroy the earth in the same manner. This presents the theme of divine mercy, forgiveness, and the opportunity for a fresh start. The Ark also serves as a symbol of preservation and the sanctity of life. By instructing Noah to bring pairs of every kind of animal aboard the Ark, God emphasized the value of biodiversity and the togetherness of all living beings. The Ark becomes a vessel not just for Noah and his family, but for the entirety of God's creation. More so, in Christian theology, the Ark is often seen as a foreshadowing of Christ. Just as the Ark served as the means of salvation from the flood, Christ is considered the ultimate means of salvation from sin. In this context, the Ark becomes a typology pointing to the redemptive work of Christ. But have you ever wondered about what happened to the Ark after the flood? What do you think became of the Ark after the flood? In the past century, many individuals have claimed to know what happened to the Ark after the flood. The fate of Noah's Ark after the Flood remained one of the enduring mysteries and subjects of speculation. The Bible provides an account of the Ark coming to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Still, it doesn't offer detailed information on its post-flood fate. Several theories and explorations have been proposed to determine the fate of the Ark after the Flood or the current state of the Ark. Some believers assert that from a religious perspective, God, in his wisdom, might have chosen to conceal the Ark or allow it to disintegrate to prevent it from becoming an object of worship. The focus is often on the spiritual significance of the Ark rather than its physical preservation. Some have also speculated that the wooden structure of the Ark, if it existed, would have undergone natural decay. Harsh weather conditions, exposure to elements, and the passage of time could have contributed to the deterioration of the Ark, leaving little to no visible traces. However, as we mentioned in the earlier part of this video, archaeologists and researchers have recently discovered the Ark to be in Turkey. Mount Ararat, located in modern-day Turkey, has been a focal point for expeditions and searches for the Ark. 
This mountain now in modern-day Turkey holds a special place in the story of the Ark. It was a geographical location that was a symbol of hope and a new beginning. Some claim to have discovered large wooden structures on the mountain, proposing that these remnants could be the remains of Noah's Ark. Soil samples from atop the highest peaks in Turkey reveal human activity and marine materials. The dating of the rock and soil from the location matches with the biblical timing of Noah's Ark. The Noah's Ark scan project claims they have used 3D scans to find a strange-looking shape in the Turkish mountains that gives the accurate size of the Ark. The Bible Archaeology Search and Exploration Institute believes the Ark may have settled in Elor's Mountain stretching from Armenia to Afghanistan. During an expedition there, the team found a peculiar rock form, 14,000 feet above sea level that looked like fossilized sea beams. They also found sea life around it, indicating that it might have been in the ocean then. Ancient reports also speak of the Ark being readily accessible to specific groups of people even describing an annual festival that supposedly took place on a mountain slope to commemorate the Ark's landing. According to reports, a team observed Noah's Ark from 60 different locations. The ship is broken in several places. However, it is not completely destroyed because it is buried in a thick layer of snow. So, due to its broken nature, experts were able to enter it. Chinese expert Dean Chen, who inspected the ship, asserted that each room on the ship is 5M high and any animal can easily fit in. He also observed the pieces of the ship with radiocarbon technology and claimed that it is 4,800 years old. Several boxes were said to be found on the ship, but the Chinese experts could not open them. However, some have asserted that the claim of discovering Noah's Ark is not new. Interestingly, during World War II, a British soldier called Leonard went to Iraq to participate in the war. He was very interested in history and archaeology. Therefore, he started buying and collecting various artifacts in Iraq's markets. Consequently, when Leonard passed away, his son Simeon inherited his belongings, but Simeon donated them to the British Museum. From there, British archaeologist Irving Finkel began to examine these belongings. One of the items was a tablet written in the ancient Assyrian language. When Finkel translated the tablet, he was amazed by what he discovered. So what did the tablet say? The tablet read that when humans became too sinful, God became angry with them and decided to drown the sinners. Then the angels delivered God's message to a righteous man, Noah, who lived in the Tigris and Euphrates valleys. God commanded Noah to build an ark and bring righteous people on board and a pair of every living creature. The tablet described the ark as so large that it was the size of a football stadium. It was also written on the tablet that Neo's Ark was not as long as today's ship, but egg-shaped. In those days, ships of this kind used to run in the Tigris and Euphrates, but that's not all. Many have speculated that the Ark of Noah's narrative is a subject of biblical archaeology. There have been discussions around its connectivity with biblical narratives, and it has also been a sign of end times prophecy inciting God's salvation plan about end times. But what biblical narrative is it connected to? And does it have anything to do with end times? Noah's Ark, a well-known biblical story, has intrigued many with the idea of a massive boat saving pairs of animals from a great flood. While the story is rooted in religious beliefs, archaeological explorations have sought evidence of the Ark's existence. The Bible describes Noah constructing the Ark to escape a worldwide flood. The search for physical proof begins with examining historical records and geological formations. Some researchers proposed that the flood was a localized event, pointing to evidence of ancient floods in the Mesopotamian region. In the late 19th century, an Assyriologist named George Smith translated a Babylonian text called the Epic of Gilgamesh, which bears striking similarities to the Noah's Ark story. This led some to speculate that both narratives could be based on a shared ancient flood myth. Consequently, the quest for Noah's Ark combines religious belief with archaeological curiosity. Despite intriguing discoveries and theories, the elusive nature of tangible evidence keeps the Ark's existence an open question. As technology advances and methodologies improve, future expeditions may shed more light on this ancient mystery, offering a deeper understanding of our shared human history. So, does it have a connection with end times? 
The biblical narrative of Noah's Ark recounts a historic flood and carries profound themes of redemption and God's plan for salvation. Exploring parallels between Noah's story and end times prophecy provides a fascinating perspective on how ancient tales can resonate with beliefs about the future. Significantly, Noah's Ark is often seen as a symbol of salvation. According to the biblical account, God chose Noah and his family to escape the impending flood, instructing them to build an ark to save themselves and pairs of animals. This narrative is reminiscent of a divine plan for redemption and preservation. In the New Testament, particularly in the teachings of Jesus, there are references to the days of Noah as a metaphor for the end times. Jesus draws parallels between the people's indifference to Noah's warnings and their attitude toward impending judgment in the future. This connection suggests a timeless pattern of divine intervention for the righteous. One striking parallel is the idea of a remnant. In Noah's time, only a small group found favor with God and were saved through the ark. Similarly, many end times, prophecies highlight the concept of a faithful remnant that will be preserved amid challenges and tribulations. Also, the floodwaters in Noah's story serve as a purifying force, cleansing the world of corruption. In end of times prophecies, there's often mention of a final judgment or purification symbolized by fire in some texts. Both scenarios emphasize the idea of God renewing the world and establishing a new era of righteousness. Noah's Ark itself becomes a symbol of safety and refuge. In end times prophecies, believers are encouraged to seek refuge in God, trusting in His protection amidst tumultuous times. The Ark serves as a metaphor for the security found in a relationship with the divine during periods of upheaval. The Rainbow Covenant in Noah's story is a promise from God to never again destroy the world by flood. This covenant signifies hope and the establishment of a new beginning. In end times, prophecies and similar assurances of God's faithfulness and promises of a new creation provide believers with comfort and confidence in the face of uncertainty. Interestingly, the Ark's door is another intriguing element to note. In Noah's story, God sealed the Ark's door, allowing entry to those invited. In the end time prophecies, there's often talk of a narrow path or a door symbolizing the way to salvation. This imagery emphasizes the exclusivity of divine redemption, highlighting the importance of faith and obedience. To cap it all, the animals in Noah's Ark, entering two by two, represent diversity and unity in God's creation. In end of times prophecies, there's often a vision of a global gathering of people from various nations all over the face of the earth, like everyone coming together on the last day. This imagery explains the universality of God's salvation plan, embracing people from all walks of life. That brings us to the end of this video. Let us know what you think about the discovery of Nao's Ark and all the other discoveries. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more.